Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about um, Cantrust versus Afria or uh, Afira. Uh, things are Afira. Uh, no, Afria. Let's just say Afria. Fuck it. Afria. Cantrust versus Afria. I have an image of both Cantrust product, it's the bottle, and the bag is Afria product. I say. I just all I have to say is the Afria product is I don't know doesn't really smell like anything still gets you high uh, it's okay I mean I'm, I'm, I have nothing special to say about Afria can trust the product kind of smell it smells okay uh, it smokes okay I don't know. They're both kind of similar. I think I would give Afri. I would give Cantrust a slight edge. I'd say Cantrust is slightly better than Afri. Af Afri doesn't really have anything special to it. At least Cantrust, it smells a little bit like berry, blueberries. So that's that's really all I have to say about the pro between the comparison between Cantrust and Afri. I honestly believe Cantrust is extremely undervalued. Very undervalued company. I mean, worst case scenario, I say this stock would probably go, go around six dollars. I don't think it'll uh, like I, like I mean, it could go back down to two dollars and fifty cents. It probably won't, but man, you would have made so much money if you bought if you knew about Cantrust and bought it when it IPO'd. So much money, cause the stock went all the way up to like uh, twelve bucks, declined all the way back to six bucks, climb back to ten bucks. So I think the worst case scenario, this stock goes around to six dollars. Um, will it ever hit six dollars? Maybe, but six dollars. I think this company is very undervalued, especially if you look at the market cap. It's nine hundred fourteen million dollars. They, you know, Afria, four point one, four billion dollars versus Cantrust is a billion dollars. There's something, there's something wrong here. That's for sure. And then the, the amount of shares they have is also very appealing too. One hundred five million shares, while Afria has two hundred and forty nine million shares. Cantrust has the edge when it comes to the amount of shares. And the fact that it's undervalued, that's what I believe anyways. I don't know. It doesn't really matter why I believe. It matters what if rich people are back in Cantrust. If rich people back Cantrust and hundreds of millions of dollars get poured into the stock, then yeah, I can easily see this money cap doubling to $2 billion, $3 billion in the future. But that's only if uh, a, ma a massive amount of money decides to back Cantrust versus Afria or... Aurora, uh, you know, Canopy, because I really believe, from my research, I really believe Cantrust is undervalued. So, you know, this is a comparison between Afria and Cantrust. I've already talked about Afria already, so I'm not going to get too much into it. Um, so Afria right now can produce around 35,000 kilograms, because if you look at the, the date on this investor pre presentation, it's October 11, 2018. So as of October 2018, they can produce about 35,000 kilograms, 5,000 from Broken Coast, and 30,000 from Africa One. But by January 2019, they should be producing about... This is wrong. This is misleading. I don't think it's going to be January. They said that... So I don't know exactly what the production capacity right now is. They had never really talked to it, but uh, I believe from an interview that I listened to uh, the CEO, he says that by near the end of next, like they'll be ramping up to two hundred and thirty thousand kilograms by the end of next year. Uh, near the end of next year, because according to this, this is like one hundred ten, one hundred forty. That's two hundred and fifty. 255,000 kilograms by January 2019. So they're jumping from 35,000 kilograms of, as of October 2018 to all the way to the 55,000 kilograms by January 2019. I don't think so. 
I think it's going to be a gradual process. It's going to be like 45, 50, 55. So that's what I believe. Right now, CanTrust can produce, like, as of June 26, 2018, CanTrust opened the greenhouse facility, which will be able to produce uh, 50,000 kilograms. Right now, it's operating at 450,000 square foot. So, you know, this facility plus their own facility, uh, and then they're, they're also ad uh, expanding this uh, greenhouse facility so additional 600,000 square feet, which will give them over a million, 100,000 kilograms of cannabis somewhere in, to, uh, somewhere in 2019. And then right now, like this is not, this is as July 13, 2018. This is not including Ontario, but they announced that they have a total of 17,000 kilograms of like guaranteed supply agreement. This, this is minimum anyway, so it can go a lot higher than that. And then, and then now they then on September fourteenth, two thousand eighteen, they they announced that they achieved uh, nationwide distribution across Canada, so they able to sell product all through Canada. So you know they're one of the very few companies that can distribute all the products throughout Canada. So that's that's a very good sign for CanTrust. Uh, you know, CanTrust also made an investment similar to uh, Aurora. They bought uh, Australia's company for six point four million dollars, a nineteen point eight percent stake in CanTrek. CanTrek has a one point seven million square feet greenhouse facility, and they're also uh, attacking the Asia Pacific regions. So, they're with the partner of CanTrek, they are also. Uh, going after the Asia Pacific and uh, and maybe in the future, CanTrust will buy out this company. Maybe with their stock value, so that's a that would increase their production quite a bit. One point seven million square feet. I don't know if this. I don't know if Cantec is a publicly traded company. I guess you guys can look, but uh, yeah, that's interesting because I I do believe that. Uh, can 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 trust might one day just take over Cantec and and start producing in Australia and generate revenue in Australia. So that's a good sign. And then uh, with their partner Stendo Care, they managed to ship the first product to uh, first oil product to uh, Denmark, and I believe they also have an investment with. <coughs> I believe they have an investment with also with Standocare. I don't have the article up, but I do believe it. And then in 2019, 2020, they'll be doing coffee, coffee brew cannabis. Uh, they already been approved in the U.S. and this is a patent technology that they they like. They're the only one that can really offer this right now, and it works with the these machines. So that's pretty cool. Cannabis infused coffee. Uh, they're going to be selling in the United States, so that I don't know how that would work because isn't it illegal for them to sell cannabis products to the United States? Maybe they're selling it with another partner. So this this is what I don't understand about this. I mean, yeah, it sounds awesome, but how would how does it work? Because it's patent on the U.S. and Canadian, uh, but maybe they're just. Lending the pen to a company in the US and the US companies make it so then they get uh, Money for every time one of these things get made, but they're not really selling cannabis products in the United States Maybe that's the whole Purpose of this thing, but then they're gonna be selling this in Canada, too So, you know, it's a unique product that no other licensed producer is really really tapping right now and then another thing that they're tapping that no licensed producer really uh, attacking to is the vet market. I mean, I get, I, I, I know that um, Canopy might be uh, into this market because I heard that they're doing studies on this market right now. And then Aurora has uh, Hemco that is selling CBD food products to pets. So they they're not alone in this market for sure, but they're one of the very few companies that are attacking this market. I know Africa has not said anything about the pet market, but uh, 
you know, I, I guess it wouldn't, I guess they, uh, in the future, Africa could announce something for the pets, but right now, you know, can't trust has a first mover advantage because they're already kind of heavily invested into the into the pet market. It's a unique park uh, market that uh, you no, know, that not very li- many many licensed producers are looking at. So can trust will be having the third quarter two thousand eighteen financial results on November fourteenth. I'm gonna be predicting how much product they're gonna be selling. Uh, to the rack market uh, and what their numbers are going to be like uh, for the upcoming earnings. Um, if you want to listen on to the event, uh, there's a link right here. Unlike the unlike the Alcana event where I had to use a phone to phone in to listen, you can just uh, click on this link, log in, and you can listen to the event. Which is uh, way better than what uh, I guess liquor stores had or Alcana had it. D- definitely gonna be listening. It's gonna be at the end of the day at 5 p.m. I'm gonna probably listen to it and probably make a video out of it. My, why, my, might as well. Why not? Uh, so if you could, you uh, this is the reason why I think Cantrus is undervalued. Look at the inventory. It's tw- as of June thirtieth, two thousand eighteen. They had twenty five point six million dollars of inventory, while Afria had thirty four point seven five two, like thirty five million dollars of inventory as the end of August thirty first. So you know, if you tack on an extra month, we're looking at closer to thirty versus thirty five. So, you know, Cantrus has, you know, just as much inventory as Afria. So, Cantrus's numbers are going to be very, very similar to Afria, in my opinion. And yet, you know, if you look back at the market cap, $1 billion versus $4 billion. So, when Cantrus reports numbers that are very similar or even surpass Afria, uh, where you think, you know, like, Honestly, Cantrust is just undervalued in my opinion from all the stuff I can, all the research that I've been putting into it. So, so what what I think? So, I I think that Cantrust will uh, have like a guarantee supply agreement. This is just a guess because they managed to get the entire Canada population. Mike, I would put you know 30, 30, 000, at least thirty thousand kilograms. Of guaranteed supply agreements because they have Ontario and then now they just attack the rest of Canada. You divide that by 12. So about 2,500 kilograms. As of June 30th, 2018, they're already generating well, $9 million of revenue. So you take 2.5,000, like 2, uh, sorry, 25000, zero, zero, zero. so 2.5 million grams. They're gonna be supplying to all the provinces. You times that by five point five. You're getting about thirteen million dollars. So I think Cantra's next earnings is gonna be about twenty twenty four, twenty five million dollars. That's like a hundred percent in like that's more than a hundred percent increase quarter over quarter. So I don't know, like I think Cantrus is undervalued. Other people might not. And uh, and another thing too, I heard that Cantrus wants to list on the Nasdaq, and they're going to be listing on the like Cantrus qualifies the Nasdaq. And I heard that they, uh, they have intentions to list on the Nasdaq. They're not aiming for the New York Stock Exchange. I don't know why, but they're definitely going to be listing on the Nasdaq. So at like under one billion dollars, I think they are very very undervalued. Just like Wayland, Wayland's very undervalued too, but it doesn't really matter what I think. It matters if big money is backing Cantrus, and right now, if you look at uh, Cantrus's volume, it's very low. It's one point one five million for a stock that's like one dollar, like nine bucks, versus like uh, Afria, which has almost seven million volume for a stock that is like fifteen to eighteen bucks, depending on the day. So. All I can say is I think Kendra's is undervalued. 
extremely undervalued. I mean, I, you, I guess, granted, you can say Afria in the future, in like, you know, the end of 2019 will produce way more product than can trust. So you can you have to take that into account, but they're only producing twice as much as Cantrus, and they have four times the market cap of Cantrus. So, and you know you never know, right? Cantrus is gonna keep building their facility; they're gonna keep expanding. So, I don't know, kind of undervalued in my opinion. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this. Uh, subscribe for future updates, and have a great day. Bye.